そうですねあの子供の頃、まあ、ホラーっていうと大体限定された場所での,あの例えば幽霊が出たとかそういう狭い範囲での,あの,ぶあの描き方をしてたんですけど、えー、ラブクラフトとかに出会ってあの巨大なものが怖いとかあと宇宙が怖いというような。あのなんかスケールがどんどん大きくなっていってですね。The works of horror maestros Junji Ito and H.P. Lovecraft aren't just international best-selling phenomena these days. These kindred spirits are also two halves of the greatest glow-up story ever witnessed during the last hundred years of horror fiction. The manga of Junji Ito used to be internet otaku bait of the most obscure variety. His one offs and standout comic panels would see plenty of circulation as viral memes and social media fodder, but there was little consideration given to the man himself for his larger body of work. Nowadays, after a few deluxe edition reprints of his most famous manga, he's become a golden child of horror media and possibly the most famous horror illustrator in existence. 30 plus years ago, the writings of one Howard Phillips Lovecraft were similarly consigned to the realm of horror cult classics beloved by obsessive weirdos and few others. This is the too familiar story of a writer artist who didn't see much public acclaim until long after they had passed away. Now, Lovecraft's writings are considered to be not just amazing literature that almost single handedly gave birth to the genre of cosmic horror. But also held up as some of the most important and influential genre fiction of the 20th century, standing proudly alongside other titans like J.R.R. Tolkien and Arthur C. Clarke. These days, you can't swing a dead Shoggoth without hitting an adaptation, riff, or spiritual successor to the writings of Lovecraft and the Cthulhu mythos, and nowhere is this pop cultural reanimation more apparent than in the medium of video games. You could create an entire multi hour video essay on the incredible and forward thinking games of the last decade or so that have been directly inspired by the pantheon of the Elder Gods and their strange aeons. We've reached such a point of peak saturation of Lovecraftian media that, honestly, it's probably easier for a horror game to stand out if it slaps a big label on the cover that says not inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Or Twin Peaks, for that matter, but that's a whole nother video essay. But long before H.P. Lovecraft became posthumously famous worldwide, he was already an acclaimed cultural figure in Japan. As early as the late 1940s, Lovecraft tales like The Statement of Randolph Carter were being translated and serialized in Hakaba Magazine and other Japanese periodicals, and his entire body of work has since been republished in Japanese many times over. So it's not at all surprising that Lovecraft's writings ended up being quite influential in Japanese media, well before Sandy Peterson's Call of Cthulhu pen and paper role playing game brought Lovecraft fully into the global mainstream in the 1980s. Hope you're doing well, Sandy. For his part, Junji Ito has openly acknowledged and embraced the enormous artistic influence of Lovecraft's writing, most notably in his masterpiece manga Uzumaki, along with various other excellent works like Hellstar Remina and Censor. With his intoxicating special sauce blend of the horrific, the macabre, and the eldritch, Junji Ito's star has been steadily on the rise for the past decade, to the point where he's basically become a near ubiquitous international celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it helps immensely that the creator of such mind melting artistic grotesqueries basically has the same wholesome energy as your strange aunt or uncle who's a little bit shy and awkward but has an unexpectedly sweet side and is kind to everyone they meet. <laughs> If we could trace this wave of Junji Ito mania back to its prime mover, the genesis is almost certainly Silent Hills, the hugely influential video game dream collaboration that never was, which counted Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, and Ito among its creative leads. Fast forward nearly a decade, and it seems like we're living through the era of peak Junji Ito. Netflix just released an animated Ito short story compilation earlier this year. Adult Swim this fall is putting out a very promising big budget adaptation of Uzumaki. And the 2023 Comic Con in San Diego dedicated an entire wing of its exhibition hall to the life and works of Japan's reigning master of horror manga. 
But for all the Ito mania that we've enjoyed over the last few years, there aren't really any games out there that have successfully captured the very specific feeling of being sucked further and further down an endless spiraling horror rabbit hole that you get from reading one of Ito's manga. The feeling of creeping dread that begins when you notice some seemingly unimportant or mundane detail that's somehow wrong and out of place. More and more terrifying events keep piling up, and yet the otherworldly pull of the unraveling mystery compels you ever onward, until you get ever more subsumed within eldritch realms of madness and terror, your sanity dwindling and your grip on reality fraying, knowing that no matter how this ends, you will be forever branded by that unfathomable horror you've witnessed. Yes, no game has ever really managed to recreate that ultra-specific feeling you get from reading a Junji Ito manga. Until... World of Horror, an indie game made by mostly solo developer and part-time dentist Panstash, aka Pavel Kuzminski, is a supremely intoxicating, alchemical concoction of Lovecraftian cosmic horror Junji Ito's striking black-and-white manga art style presented in Apple II reminiscent one-bit graphics and UI design to deliver a beautiful melange of point-and-click gaming, choose-your-own-adventure, tough-as-nails dungeon-delving combat and blisteringly unforgiving yet narratively rich roguelike randomization. <sighs> After over four long years of early access and even more time and development, this modern gem is poised for a full 1.0 release on not just PC, but also the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4 and 5 on October 19th this year. So, at the time of release of this video, tomorrow. I've played a whole lot of this game in anticipation of the official release. I had even showcased an early build in my first Games From Underground episode a long time ago. And I'm excited to give you the long anticipated update and proper verdict here and now. World of Horror is no hyperbole, a masterfully compelling role-playing game and one of the most unique and memorable RPG adventures I've enjoyed in years. <sighs> yes, there's just something about cosmic horror made in Poland that never disappoints. There must be some part of the Polish collective unconscious that gives them an incomparable insight into Eldritch horrors. I don't know. But for now, hold on to what little of your sanity you have left as we delve headfirst and deep into the abyss of madness once again. It is time to enter the world of horror. Before you continue, a little interlude for the sponsor of this video. If you've been following me for a while, you know I am a firm proponent of using a VPN for your daily internet usage. If you partake in any way in file sharing, emulation, or if you want to circumvent geo-blocked websites and apps, it's important to have the option to not let your ISP and government know every little thing you're doing. I've been using NordVPN for a good while now on my Windows PC and I've been really content with its features and usability. Nord servers are being regularly independently audited for their no-log policy, while the company operates under the jurisdiction of Panama, a country without mandatory data retention laws, which for you means that no government can legally subpoena them to release your data. Not that there's any data to begin with. NordVPN has been working smoothly and flawlessly for me and provided highly appreciated features like customizable kill switch behavior, split tunneling to decide what goes through the VPN and what doesn't, and I super appreciate that it gives you the deliberate choice not to have any processes run in the background when it's closed on Windows. Most other VPNs I've used in the past clutter up your system processes without even telling you, even when the program's not open. I hate that, and I appreciate Nord being transparent and respecting my autonomy in that regard a ton, actually. So hey, if you want to give NordVPN a shot yourself, get a special offer through this video at nordvpn.com slash Ragnar and get four months extra on a two-year plan subscription for a sizable discount. All of it comes with a no questions asked 30-day money back guarantee so you can make up your mind risk-free. If that sounds good to you, hop over to nordvpn.com slash Ragnar, links also in the description. So thanks a lot again to our sponsor, especially for filling in on such short notice this time. It's a huge help in keeping this channel afloat next to the people's support through Patreon and YouTube membership crowdfunding. I genuinely appreciate it. So now, let's get back to World of Horror.
first things first. Right from the jump, World of Horror throws the player into the deep end of the pool, and your only choice is to sink or swim. The game opens up with a cursed fake boot screen like you'd see when a beautiful vintage personal computer sputters to life, as if its circuit boards were also possessed by demons. Upon beginning a new playthrough, we're welcomed with a mood-setting, retro-nostalgic opening narration where the player arrives by train in the remote seaside town of Shiokawa. I couldn't help but ask Jenny for a dramatic reading here. Jenny, if you please. City of Shiokawa, Japan, 1980X. Something strange is happening in our town. Robed figures can be seen gathering in the woods at night. People are going missing. Disgusting creatures are terrorizing the seaside. The rapid technological progress of the modern era brings comfort, but also new unknown threats. Old gods, malicious eldritch beings who ruled the earth eons ago, are awakening as reality starts to crumble. Armed with clues, spells, and your dwindling sanity, you'll investigate mysteries across the city and in realms beyond. The end of the world is at hand. Immediately, you can't help but marvel at the attention to detail in this beautifully skeuomorphic user interface, replete with switches, toggles, menus, submenus, a field of play window that often contains hidden interactive hotspots to reward and or punish the inquisitive player. As we fit the game's setting and its one-bit monochrome pixel art aesthetic, the HUD is designed to resemble a late 80s home computer like the Apple II or the PC-88, only haunted as fuck. It even does that wonderful creepy pasta thing where it flashes blink and you'll miss it esoteric and disturbing shapes in the liminal space as you're switching from one menu to the next. Not to mention how much this game loves serving up a jump scare every time you all tab away and then return to the game. Yeah, this is pure unadulterated digital devil story, people. <laughs> Before we even talk about the gameplay or narrative, I just gotta praise the interface for a bit longer. Because this initial brush with the game is where that critical sink or swim feeling really sets in for first time players. There's almost no tutorializing to get you familiar with the interface and how to operate it. The best guidance you can receive is via an extra information option in the settings menu, which will explain certain interface functions when you mouse over them. And look, Maybe you've taken one look at this interface and you're thinking to yourself, "You, what is this game? I don't have the time to blunder my way through learning some incomprehensible Norton Commander-ass interface just so I can enjoy a Junji Ito game. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're stronger and smarter than you realize, and I have faith in you, and you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. I literally grew up using computers with busy interfaces exactly like this, and I still experienced the briefest wrinkling of my nose when I first started playing World of Horror because of its layout. But it really only takes just a bit of inquisitiveness and experimentation before you're able to crack open the game's mysteries and begin extracting the juicy innards like you're a disaster survivor preying on a helpless villager who got transformed into a snail when there's no other food to be had. Anyway, right, World of Horror. In terms of helping the player get to grips with the mechanics and the interface, there is a mini-tutorial mission that explains the basics, even if you consider yourself a hardcore RPG grognard. First-time players will definitely want to pick this spine-chilling story of school scissors scenario for their first go-round. But this introductory story is pretty bare-bones and only covers the basics of combat and the choose-your-own-adventure scenarios that get served up via the game's randomizer. You'll need to play the full game to properly get your head around the more complex mechanics, like making use of your equipment and inventory properly, the magic system, or exploring the town. Pretty much everything else is left entirely up to the player's experimentation and inquisitiveness as they poke and prod at the interface and familiarize themselves with the game's general flow and progression. Which I found oddly fitting, because when I was a wee lad, that was literally how I learned the ins and outs of the personal computers I got my hands on at the time, much to the dismay of my father who thought it must be possessed by some eldritch spirit considering how often things went broke in his absence. 
But again, it really doesn't take too much effort to get into the nitty gritty. For how maximalist in its appearance, the game's various systems are actually quite focused and purposeful, and you'll arrive at a broad stroke sense of how to play in next to no time at all. World of War is turn and action based rather than real time, so you always got plenty of breathing room to strategize and figure out your next move. For how brutally uncompromising and difficult the game can be, it's also quite forgiving in this way, because the turn-based systems mean you're often able to wriggle out of even the diciest situations, if you're both patient and witty about it. Again, it's all very roguelike and perfectly reminiscent of those legendary RPG anecdotes where you win an impossible fight by throwing an unidentified potion at a super powerful enemy that's about to kill you and by pure chance turning it into a harmless chicken. You will need every moment of planning you can get because if you make a mistake or screw up really badly or die, game over, man. It's game over. There are no continues or quick saves, just the brutality of random chance and the weight of all your bad decisions coming back to haunt you with a vengeance. At first, this all might seem like an aggressively hostile and player unfriendly set of design choices, stuff that appeals to only the most hardcore of hardcore old school players and with nothing to offer anyone else. But spend just a little bit of time with World of Horror and you'll start to appreciate how all of these elements are highly considered, purposeful and intentional design choices. Choices that not only do a magnificent job of establishing atmosphere and setting, but also reinforce the game's Lovecraftian ludo-narrative themes of finding the grit and will to confront impossible odds and defeat the overwhelming eldritch horrors arrayed against you. You know the drill. As you'll discover shortly after starting up the tutorial scenario, combat is a turn-based, back-and-forth affair that's very reminiscent of the old-school RPGs of yore. You'll face down your foe, use a selection of skills to either boost your own potency or make your enemy more vulnerable, and then queue up attacks that draw from a pool of available time, basically the game's equivalent of action points. This being a roguelike, World of Horror is structured around playing through multiple repeatable runs. Each playthrough involves the player attempting to solve the dark mysteries of Shiokawa by exploring the town and progressing through a set of randomized events and encounters, earning items, gear and special boons along the way that can increase your power and survivability. By solving each of a set of five randomized mystery scenarios, you'll earn a key to one of the five locks guarding the mysterious and ominous coastal lighthouse that looms tall over the town. And it's only through solving all five mysteries and ascending to the top of the lighthouse that you'll successfully complete the playthrough and banish the old god of this run and their cosmic curse with them. But player beware. Each of the game's many fights or 100 plus random events comes with the possibility that the encounter will leave you permanently disfigured, forcing the player to cope with a harsh debuff for the rest of the playthrough. Successful runs can last upwards of an hour, but new players are likely to crash and burn after about 15 to 20 minutes, and that's very much by design. Indeed, the interface, the horror theming, the high level of difficulty, the roguelike replayability, all of these elements work hand in glove towards the same goal, delivering on World of Horror's declared promise of being a one-bit love letter to Junji Ito and H.P. Lovecraft, set in a hellish roguelite reality with turn-based combat and unforgiving choices. Yes, World of Horror is indeed a brutally difficult and unforgiving game, where it's not uncommon for an unseemingly successful run to come to a calamitous end when you run up against an unexpected obstacle or sudden streak of bad luck. But again, what could be more appropriate in a game where you're a mere mortal squaring off against the most unfathomable horrors the pantheon of gods as old as time can throw at you? It will probably take most players a dozen or more attempts before they finally complete a run successfully and resolve the infernal mystery that dwells atop the cursed lighthouse of Shiokawa. And just like the finest Junji Ito stories, the creeping horror that builds over the course of the journey is the entire point of the experience. A twisted spiral pattern whose full majesty and menace only becomes apparent as you wind your way deeper and deeper into the madness. Roguelike and procedural generation have become pretty buzzy, but also near meaningless terms when it comes to describing a video game at this point, let alone an entire genre of games. It's gotten to the point where two fundamentally different games will now proudly and cheerfully self-describe as roguelikes, and no one really bats an eye anymore. 
But World of Horror goes much further in this regard than most games who claim the mantle of a rogue and net hack. Each run through the game sees the player go through five different story scenarios, randomly drawn from a pool of 20, each of which offers its own unique narrative premise and twists to the gameplay mechanics. And these scenarios are shuffled further still via dozens and dozens of randomized, choose-your-own-adventure style events that occur as you explore and investigate the town, earning experience as you go and advancing your character's sheet up via stats and perks. For example, you'll come across a creepy townsperson asking you for some kind of favor and then be prompted to choose from a list of three responses. And your choices will determine how each event plays out, which each response often giving a wildly different resolution. One response might see you earn a new piece of gear, the second response will thrust you into a grueling combat encounter, and the third response resolves with nothing happening at all. Not to mention how the big bad old god threatening Shiokawa is likewise randomized, with each abyssal foe bringing a unique mechanical twist to the gameplay for the duration of the run. Kothaka Torasu, the spider god's Byzantine webs prevent you from escaping from combat encounters, while Ithatu, the devouring flame's unholy aura, causes both you and your foes to deal increased damage. Many games overpromise and underdeliver when it comes to this kind of mechanical reactivity, but World of Horror is one of those rare titles where, well and truly, choices matter. Trademark. Even and especially when those choices are randomly tailored to your actions. For example, while engaging in some schoolyard gossip in search of a lead, I was able to recruit a friend who gave my character a bonus to luck, providing a slight under-the-hood boost to the invisible dice roll checks that govern how events and combat encounters play out. In this case, though, that bonus wasn't enough to stop me from blacking out in a hospital elevator after being ambushed by a profane beast and its many writhing tentacles. To the game's great credit, there are never any obviously correct answers for its 100 plus randomized choose your own adventure events, with many of the seemingly bad responses offering outcomes that are just as potentially useful and entertaining as the safe ones, which is pretty much the highest possible compliment you can give for RPG design in my book. To make quote unquote bad choices interesting instead of inferior or outright wrong. Much like beloved games like Disco Elysium and Baldur's Gate 3, this is a deep role-playing experience where playing through the failure is not just encouraged, but highly rewarded. Sometimes you'll even succumb to the dark compulsion of the old gods and opt for the most obviously horror-tastic response you can. Because while this usually means taking some kind of hit to your survivability, these bad answers are often the only way to unlock powerful spells, the best of the best gear, and even entire encounters in the profane eldritch realms that lurk beyond this mortal coil. The beauty of this is that it's so highly in harmony with the narrative that's dynamically woven across the playthrough. The story scenarios themselves are incredibly well done too, each with its own narrative hook and gameplay gimmicks that resolve in multiple unique endings, be they good, bad, or bone-chillingly horrific. There's a demonic ramen shop selling noodles the local townsfolk just can't get enough of, thanks to the darkly rumored secret ingredient in every bowl. A dread-filled candlelight vigil for a dead relative that presages an entire evening spent warding off the things that go bump in the night. A bizarre haunted internet chat room making the rounds in your social circle where the users mysteriously wind up insane, dead, or even worse. And that's just the first three I came up with off the top of my head while writing a script. Each of the game's 20 scenarios are well-written horror yarn, compelling and layered with loving callbacks and shoutouts to their many inspirations in Japanese folklore and pop culture. But even setting aside the game's well-realized grounding in Japanese culture, World of Horror can effortlessly stand on its own merits thanks to its intensely creepy illustrations, animations, rich and coherent environments, and intensely evocative monster designs. The sparse, one-bit style never lacks for expressiveness or spookiness, with its exquisitely composed horror imagery and surprising visual detail that adds loads of depth and characterization to every scene. The lo-fi aesthetic here is not just set dressing, but a perfect example of the efficacy of showing less to evoke uncertainty and dread in the audience. In one battle, a scissor-wielding woman slashed at my face, scarring my character's cheek with a long vertical slice that became a permanent fixture on my status portrait for the rest of the run. Little moments and details like this are a big part of what makes every run feel unique and personal. 
There's a certain macabre appeal to the picture of Dorian Gray style transformation your character undergoes with each run, becoming increasingly haggard and disfigured as the adventure progresses. Again, very appropriate stuff for a Lovecraft meets Junta Ito game. Later on in that same scenario, I had to match up two arcane sigils on a school chalkboard to create a rune for a ceiling ritual. Though the shapes were drawn with relative simplicity, matching the overlapping images with the cipher you're provided has just enough uncertainty and friction to make for an excellent puzzle where you'll feel that nail-biting, did I do that correctly, tension right until the last moment. All of this hangs on the framework of World of War's moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and there's a, pun honestly not intended, shocking amount of depth and complexity to enjoy here as well. The overarching game loop is about managing your character's pool of very limited stamina and reason points while also keeping an eye on the ever-increasing doom meter at the top of the screen. Which, by the way, I gotta chef's kiss the interface one more time for how there's a simple yet extremely effective visual cue at the top of the screen where the lighthouse becomes slowly enshrouded by the creeping crepuscular void with each percentage point that gets added to your doom meter. Just mwah. Combat and random events will chip away at your pool of stamina and reason. Generally speaking, physical struggle of any kind depletes your stamina, and mental or spiritual conflict subtracts from your reason. And to be sure, a firm and irreversible game over awaits the player the moment either the stamina or reason stat falls below zero, with no second chances. Doom, on the other hand, is a kind of metagame meter that keeps on ticking upwards percentage point by percentage point with every action you take during a run. Certain fortuitous actions or spells can cause it to decrease slightly, and you'll usually shave off a few points of doom by successfully resolving a mystery scenario and earning a precious lighthouse key. But otherwise, your doom will steadily and inexorably increase with every step you take and every move you make, because the gods will be watching you. There are also various actions you can take to restore your stamina and reason like resting at your home base apartment, but these two will tack on a few points to your doom meter, because time is ticking, and the player is constantly reminded that in World of Horror, everything comes at a cost. And once doom hits 100%, your run is 100% over. <laughs> because an eldritch daemon god from realms beyond mortal reckoning has just damned and or destroyed the world. Each event and random encounter, from exploration to puzzles to battles, will continue to chip away at your pool of very limited resources. Even the simple act of browsing the wares of a local Shiba Inu proprietor comes at the cost of increasing your doom meter, bringing you ever closer to the apocalypse. The constant tick tick ticking down of your various stats creates this intense sense of pressure where the player is constantly juggling their never quite enough resources in a race against time. Even a supremely knowledgeable and well-prepared player is probably going to finish a successful run by just the skin of their teeth. It bears repeating, many games these days may call themselves roguelikes, but World of Horror is one of those rare titles that makes the randomization and procedural elements integral to not just the gameplay, but also the narrative and themes. And all of these interlocking systems create a superb mechanical framework for a narrative horror game, to the point where you could charitably describe World of Horror as a kind of retro-flavored evolution of the survival horror genre. A truly unique experience that's unlike almost any other game out there. Or at least, any other video game out there. Now, savvy horror gaming connoisseurs will see many of World of Horror's elements and think, stamina and sanity points? Luck of the draw gear and weapons? Randomized events and mythos scenarios? Randomized old gods that add a mechanical spin on each run? A terra meter? Hey, wait a minute. You spilled the beloved 1987 board game Arkham Horror all over my Junji Ito fan cam. And yes, you are 100% correct. Dear viewer, after spending some time with World of Horror and rereading Uzumaki, I am beyond convinced that World of Horror is the game equivalent of taking Junji Ito's narrative and art style, mixing it with Arkham Horror's tabletop mechanics, and slow cooking it until it all turns into a deliciously mind flaying stew. Baby, you got a stew going. World of Horror is absolutely a Junji Ito fied take on Arkham Horror, and there's no doubt this board game was a major creative influence during development. A serialized horror story like Junji Ito's longer form manga, combined with roguelike and episodic gameplay, randomized through acquirable gear, spells, buffs, and debuffs, this is honestly and truly a match made in heaven. Or 
well, a match made in the Nightmare Corp city of Riley. World of Horror exposes you to multiple mysteries and strange happenings that appear self-contained at first glance, but as the randomized narrative progresses, you slowly piece together that there is, in fact, a common underlying threat span across all five mysteries, culminating in an ultimate confrontation with an eldritch horror at the top of a cursed lighthouse. This kind of serialized, episodic framework for the gameplay also meshes quite nicely with the Uzumaki-inspired storytelling, which similarly features an episodic mini-horror story in each chapter that would have felt right at home in an X-Files Monster of the Week episode. For those who might not be familiar, Uzumaki is considered to be something of a narrative triumph in comics for how its seemingly disconnected one-off tales of horror end up becoming part of a much larger and even more terrifying spiral into madness. And apropos of nothing, this approach is also very much in line with the way X-Files handled continuity, with episodes that are clearly considered and labeled myth arc that propel the overarching metaplot forward and the monster of the week type episodes that are standalone one-offs that have no direct connection to the overarching continuity span across the show. But on occasion, the viewers were sometimes met with sneaky bait and switches with episodes that appeared to be independent, but that suddenly became myth arc vital through a clever twist, like famously the episode Leonard Betts, which focused on an EMT who possessed through some freak mutation the uncanny ability to sense cancer in people at a glance, because his metabolism depended on consuming cancerous tumors to sustain himself. What appeared like a typical independent Monster of the Week episode turned into a pivotal myth art piece when he started stalking Scully towards the end, hinting for the first time at the fact that she herself had contracted cancer as a result of her abduction two seasons ago. Uh, oh man, give me too much runway about this topic and it will absolutely derail into an X-Files video essay. Which... Uh, any road. World of Horror. As you can see, this game is juggling so many different influences, systems, and mechanics that this is one of those cases where it seems like it's just too complicated and unwieldy a formula to be workable. But binding all of these elements together is a drum-tight role-playing experience built around an addictive loop of strategy and repetition. It's about how the puzzle box gameplay creates a steady, ever-escalating sense of tension that is narratively framed by creepy yet mundane happenings, only for everything to spiral into indescribable scenes of true cosmic terror, featuring some of the most gnarly and gruesome pixel art you've ever beheld. It is exactly this unholy matrimony of narrative, visuals and mechanics that makes World of Horror such a one-of-a-kind experience. As a newbie player, you might muddle your way through a mystery scenario or two without engaging too much with the inventory or stat management systems, or using spells at all, or employing the more in-depth elements of the combat system like defensive maneuvers and chance to hit boosts, or, or, or. But once you feel the dark hunger to press ever deeper into the spiral of madness, you'll observe the patterns and uncover an incredibly complex and well thought out game system that's guaranteed to satisfy even the most hardcore of old school RPG lovers. You will become, and I cannot stress that enough how absolutely incredible this is, the protagonist of your own personal Uzumaki Innsmouth novella. Over time, you'll develop a sense of the various possible outcomes of each scenario, along with their associated risks and rewards, leading to magical aha moments where you suddenly realize that an item you picked up one or two scenarios ago is actually the key to unlocking an entirely new branch of your current mystery. It's a uniquely narrative-focused roguelike design that encourages you to delve into side stories and discover as many new items and encounters as possible, even if that means running the risk of wiping out on your current run and being forced to start over from the beginning. Which always sucks when it happens, but hey, a run doesn't take more than 30 to 90 minutes at the absolute maximum, so losing is never really that devastating. You may even feel yourself pulled into an endless spiraling obsession of just one more runs until you groan when you hear the garbage truck outside, wondering when the sun had the audacity to come up without your consent again. Again, there simply isn't anything else out there like World of Horror, even amongst the glut of fashionable and trendy roguelike games that are released by the seeming truckload every week. And unlike so many games that often bend over backwards to give players some form of do-over or rewind function, World of Horror emphasizes and embraces the sheer chance and cruelty of its randomization. Unlocking certain old gods and some of the more out-of-this-world scenario endings require the player to attempt them multiple times until the right combination of items and events fall into alignment. 
Though of course, this being a world of Lovecraftian nightmares, that's no guarantee that the obscure ending you achieve will be a particularly good one. If the modern, big-budget AAA formula is about making games that are, as the popular proverb goes, a mile wide and an inch deep, then World of Horror is way more than just an inch wide, but it's also as deep as the goddamn Marianas Trench, where in his house at Riley, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. The popular conception of the roguelike, and really most video games generally these days, is that they're all about that slow drip feed of incremental progress towards an ever-escalating power fantasy. They're about the small victories that accumulate and accumulate until, like a pebble rolling down a snowy mountainside, you become a glacial boulder that crushes everything in your path through sheer force of inertia. World of Horror is decidedly not that kind of power fantasy, or really any kind of power fantasy. It is cosmic horror gaming perfection, a brutal, desperate struggle that will demand all of your wits and skill just to eke out mere survival in the face of terrifying oblivion. In essence, World of Horror is the perfect disempowerment fantasy. While this may sound off-putting, you have to keep in mind that even when you succumb to the reality-shattering doom of the old gods or fall prey to the lashing tentacles of a writhing amorphous mass, you've still gained knowledge and experience that can help see you through the next go-round. Thanks to the superb pixel artwork that was literally made in MS Paint, the intensely evocative writing and the ultra-compelling one more run, one more roll of the dice gameplay loop, it is just as much fun to fail in World of Horror as it is to succeed. In other words, World of Horror is just a joy to play. And damn, could there be any higher compliment for a game of this kind, especially one developed by what is basically a one-person development team? It's been a long early access period of over four years as we've waited for this game to come out. But if this nearly complete 0.9.9 .9 version that's available at the time of this video is anything to go by, World of Horror has met and exceeded expectations and then some. And on top of everything I've described so far, this game also promises to have a healthy lifespan thanks to its open embrace of modding and user-created content. Panstash maintains a very active Discord server, and the World of Horror community has brewed up some helpful modding tools that allow you to dive in and create your own custom mystery scenarios. There's already a whole host of excellent custom mod packs available for download right this very moment. It's kind of awe-inspiring in so many ways. As I said, I had covered World of Horror in the past when the very first pre-early access demo was released on itch.io, which was a whopping four and a half years ago. It really emphasizes just how much time, effort, resources, perseverance and heart it takes for a largely solo developer to pull a feat like World of Horror off on their own. If you would have had a child when Panzer started working on it, they'd be in kindergarten now for almost a whole year. There are no superlatives to describe the amounts of respect I have for an achievement like this. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's party! It also makes me reminisce just how much time has passed for me and my channel, because in many ways the first video on it feels to me like I made it maybe one, two years ago, but not almost half a decade. Really, wow. And hey, we're still here, and I have no intention of stopping what I'm doing anytime soon. Now, since we're getting towards the end of this video, from time to time I like to pepper the credit sequence with an additional showcase of an indie game that I feel fits the main topic of the video in some way or another. In this case, since we've covered an excessively well-crafted and complex pixel art horror RPG made by a single developer from Poland, I decided it would be a great fit to show you Road Warden, which is an excessively well-crafted pixel art medieval fantasy RPG made by a single developer from Poland namely Aureus Mateusz, aka Moral Anxiety. Road Warden is an absolute achievement in astoundingly deep-branching, reactive and organically flowing narrative. This extremely satisfying and long underutilized potential of RPGs that Disco Elysium puts so front and center in people's minds. If you are in any way a fan of games that do interesting and forward-thinking things with video game narrative, you absolutely owe it to yourself to give Road Warden a try highest, highest recommendation.
Also, thank you to Aureus for helping me how to somewhat decently pronounce the Polish words in this video. Dziękuję bardzo. I tried. So, while we wrap it up here, have the pleasure to enjoy a few more impressions from Road Warden on the way. Getting back to what I talked about before, about it already being so many years since I covered World of Horror's first demo, we wouldn't be here now without you guys regularly turning up, watching, sharing, discussing, and supporting me through all this time. So many of you helped out with donations over on my Patreon, and yeah, frankly, without this financial foundation, the channel wouldn't be afloat anymore. So thanks a ton for that. If you want to help me and everyone who partakes in making these videos on old games, horror games, indie games, and combinations thereof out, then you can do so either over on my Patreon, links in the description, or alternatively, you can now also become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button right below the video. No matter which approach you choose, you'll get access to exclusive backer rewards such as early access to videos, access to the channel's supporter discord, and even your name in the credits of my videos. Thanks a lot for considering, and of course for watching in the first place, and as always, we'll end with a special shout out to my top tier supporters. Thank you, Billy Lott, Gehennas, Jin Hansen, Thomas Brunner, Morgan K, Corey Marr, Carrie George, Aurora Melpomine Crescendo, Swiss Hackmod, Nineball9606, Felix, John Boring, Catherine Escobar, Hunter Crawford and Margaret Strawn, Kenan Ward, Dana Rosa, Televin, Casper Rom, Disco Dwarf, Tara Flops, Shannon Blue, Amber Wiggins, The Spiral Architect, Isabella Stoner, Hippo Hobbly, Thwagam, Matt Gratton, Chuck Taylor, Giselle, Sam Laurel, David Zelenak, Nikot the Brave, Kyle Lee, Zoddy, Refkins and Triscuits, Uziel1447, Tabby, Terry Collins, Lucas Ferreira Leite, Laird Wackala, Ronan Krom, aka Daniel242172, Vasily Prokhorov, Sable Cowell, Lois Lane, Franz Johannes Foilner, Dr. Haley Isabella Colley, Alex Papov, Maria Rios, Chris Z, Felix D, Nathan Gillick, Lillen B, Ashtier, Raisha Griggs, Vincent Cavanaugh, Federico Rocha, Link Hughes, Serena Abramson, and Lawrence E. Buben. Until next time, ta-ta.